Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord of heaven and earth, we humbly pray that your gracious providence may give and preserve to our use the harvests of the land and of the seas, and may prosper all who labor to gather them, that we who are constantly receiving good things from your hand may always give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ecclesiasticus. So it is with every artisan and master artisan who labors by night as well as by day. Those who cut the signets of seals, each is diligent in making a great variety. They set their heart on painting a lifelike image, and they are careful to finish their work. So it is with the smith sitting by the anvil, intent upon his iron work. The breath of the fire melts his flesh, and he struggles with the heat of the furnace. The sound of the hammer deafens his ears, and his eyes are on the pattern of the object. He sets his heart on finishing his handiwork, and he is careful to complete its decoration. So it is with the potter sitting at his work and turning the wheel with his feet. He is always deeply concerned over his products, and he produces them in quantity. He molds the clay with his arm, and makes it pliable with his feet. He sets his heart to finishing the glazing, and he takes care in firing the kiln. All these rely on their hands, and all are skillful in their own work. Without them, no city can be inhabited, and wherever they live, they will not go hungry. Yet they are not sought out for the counsel of the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass today is a portion of Psalm 107. We will recite together verses 1 through 9 of Psalm 107, beginning on page 746 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim, that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of their lands, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes. They found no way to a city where they went well. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. 
for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, your Christ. Christ. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and, moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today on this Tuesday, we celebrate two distinct things that I think actually go quite well together. It is a rogation day today as we continue to celebrate this week the fruits of the earth and how our church embraces this call to respect creation and to cultivate our own attentiveness to the natural world around us that God has given us, and to see all of the ways that God's creation inspires us to encounter Christ and encounter the promises of his gospel. Today is also the commemoration of Bishop Jackson Kemper, who was a 19th century bishop after my own heart, because he hails from, not originally, but most of his work was from my home state of Wisconsin. And Jackson Kemper was an interesting man with connections to Philadelphia as well, because while he was born in 1789 in New York, he first worked in the city of Philadelphia, actually not very far from where we are now, at Christ Church with Bishop William White during the days when it was common practice for bishops to actually remain the rector of a parish church, which I don't think is a bad idea, in fact, in a lot of ways. And so Bishop Kemper was schooled under William White and then ended up traveling throughout the Midwest, taking the gospel into what was then considered to be the Northwest Territories. In fact, after he was consecrated bishop, he was known officially as Bishop of the Northwest, and something about like the rest of the Northwest, the remaining parts of the Northwest, because America, as a nation, hadn't taken shape to the extent that it would some decades. On. And Wisconsin became a state in 1848, as my civics teacher would be proud to know that I still remember. And Jackson Kemper arrived in Wisconsin before the territory was actually a state, where he proceeded to found the seminary that still exists there today, Neshota House, which was founded upon this idea that liturgical practice and the gospel informed this sense of beauty and commitment to the ways that God and faith transform our hearts to see heaven on earth before we have departed this mortal coil. Jackson Kemper was committed to the beauty of the liturgy and the integrity of preaching the gospel within it, and he drew seminarians and theologians and many clergymen from around that time to come and study in this place uh, that continues to be a place that shapes the liturgical life of the diocese in Wisconsin today. He also founded Racine College, which also has a similarly lovely legacy there. And he was known for his missionary work. He believed heartily in the spreading of the gospel in ways that were surprisingly progressive for his time. Sometimes I think we approach these legacies of missionaries, perhaps rightly, with a bit of apprehension, because of some of the decisions that were made in that time that strike us as blatantly racist, uh, classist, sexist, any number of other things that they likely were at the time, uh, but Bishop Kemper had in mind that there was something uh, ennobling, something 
wonderful about meeting people where they were as he preached the gospel. And he was integral to this mission to translate the gospel into the native languages of the Native American people in Wisconsin, including the Oneida, who still today make up a substantive presence in the Episcopal Church in the state of Wisconsin. He didn't want them to leave behind their old ways. He wanted to show how their um, devotion to spirit and life and creation was in fact something that Jesus cared very deeply for as well. And he had people come to study with him and he learned their languages and he helped translate all of the Bible into, tech, into languages that the native peoples there could understand. Now there's much to be said about missionary work. But something that I think inspires me today about Bishop Kemper is that he had a very holistic sense of faith and commitment to the gospel of Jesus. So not only was he committed to going out into these places where the gospel was not actively being preached, but he believed that there were places within our own hearts that were still in need of hearing the authenticity and completeness and grace of Christ. He believed that there should be no separation between what we were up to on Sunday morning and what we were up to the rest of the days of our week. And he noticed that sometimes there was a dissonance between what we professed at church together and, that, that, and then what we would go out and do with the rest of the hours of our day. In some sense, I like to think of this as a mission work within our own hearts. Mission work within our own lives. Think of perhaps the times when we've been driving and we've been tempted to yell something out at another driver who has done something questionable on the streets of Philadelphia. Have we invited Jesus to be present in that moment? Think of a time perhaps when we got frustrated with our spouse or our children. Was Christ invited to be a missionary of sorts? into that moment of our lives and those challenges to our spirits. Think of the times when perhaps we've spent a bit too much money or we've drank a bit too much alcohol or we haven't blessed someone else with the charity that we would expect them to give us in a similar circumstance. Those are all places where the gospel needs to be preached. Those are all places within our own lives and spirits where we need mission work. As Jesus tells us in the Gospel of St. Matthew today, if our eye is not sound, the rest of the health of our body is in question. If there's a part of us that is not sound, what might it be like to send a missionary to that place within us that needs healing? What would it be like to send a missionary into those moments in our car when we're tempted to yell things at drivers, or those moments with our families when we need more patience and grace? How can we invite mission work, like Bishop Kemper's mission work, to integrate the parts of our lives that we might separate from our faith and yet deserve attentiveness, deserve faithfulness, deserve to hear the gospel of Jesus, the gospel of the resurrection, preached with abundance, passion, and joy. My prayer today, inspired by Bishop Kemper, is that we all might be missionaries to ourselves to our own hearts, and to those places in need of healing and the good old-fashioned gospel of Jesus Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people this afternoon take the form of Form 6 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will pray together responsibly, beginning on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. For Michael, the presiding bishop of our Episcopal Church. For Daniel, our bishop 
and for Sean, Nora, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests who worship and pray in this place, for all bishops and other ministers, for all the of God in this church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially all those people who have been entrusted to us in this place for our prayers, including Chris, Sue, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Judith, Nick, Russell, Wes, John, Joan, Marilyn, Lorraine, Teresa, Will, Bryce, Audrey, Joanne, Alex, Rodney, Lily, Diana, Daniel, Eric, Joshua, Howard, Jeff, and Martha, and all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers, and all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially today giving thanks for the beauty of this week, the beginnings of the summer season, and as always, the opportunity to worship together in this place in freedom and peace. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially all those who died of COVID-19 in this past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of violence, warfare, or oppression, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most oh, merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Know we have not known things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy word, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Mark the Evangelist, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ, the bread of life. The body of Christ, the bread of life. The body of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of death. The blood of Christ, the cup of The body of Christ, the bread of life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working within you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.